Hello, this is Captain Steve Tarrant from Maine Maritime Academy, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to the tie tables. For the Coast Guard exam that you'll be taking, you'll be uh, uh, referring to the tie tables from 1983. That's the year that the problems were solved for. That way, the Coast Guard doesn't have to buy new books every year or make new questions. Uh, this video uh, is valid for any year uh, tie table, however. Terms you should be familiar with are reference station, subordinate station, which in our case is going to be mean low or low water. Uh, high to tide, which is basically the difference uh, between uh, the datum and the water surface at any state of the tide, range of tide, and duration. The cover of the book, uh, again, this is uh, the cover of the book from 1983. Uh, but, you know, there, there's that. Now, this is uh, right inside the cover. It gives you the index for the uh, region. You can see there's a uh, four different books that cover the world. Uh, so you would look at this page and figure out which book you needed. Um, uh, so uh, we're going to just use North America, South America. That's book two. Now here's a table of contents. Lots of interesting stuff in here. You can see that right there. That's that map we just looked at right there, index map. Uh, you can get astronomical data. That's inside the back cover. Notices that are sent, given to you. List of reference stations. We'll be using this quite regularly. Table one, table two, table three. Uh, you'll be list, you'll be using all of these regularly when you're calculating the height of tide at any time or what time you know you'll have a high tide or low. This is some other additional information that's inside the book. Uh, time for the sunrise and sunset. You'll also find that in your nautical almanac. Uh, here's some uh, some instructions for how to convert from local time to standard time. Uh, moonrise, moonset. That's also in the nautical almanac. Just FYI, here's going to be a table back here on conversion of feet to meters. Um, and uh, uh, you know more publications. Glossary of terms. You might refer to that. I definitely would as I'm trying to figure out the vocabulary for this uh, unit. And then finally, index of stations. You'll be using this quite regularly as well. So what I'm going to do now is just going to take you on a tour of these various facets. Uh, of the list of reference stations, table one, table two, table three, uh, glossary of terms and the index stations, and the rest of it I'll leave up to you. Uh, as we uh, flip the pages, I'm just kind of going page to page here at the moment. Um, there's a, a little note here that basically says that uh, the heights that you're going to find in this book are what would be you would expect under average conditions if you have. Uh, unusual meteorological events, you could have more or less water. So that's just sort of a note to you as the mariner. Keep that in mind as you're calculating tides. You, you, uh, if you have an extraordinary event, you could have more or less water than what you calculate. This is the list of reference stations. Statically, what's a reference station? Well, you know, that from uh, you saw from that image, uh, you know. This is book two. It's it's the east coast of North, Central, and South America. That's a lot of places, and you're going to have predictions, you know, for places for every day. Well, if you had every station all along the entire east coast of the Americas, I mean, you're, you you fill your book, your ship up with books. So what happens here is that you're uh, there's something like 30 or whatever. If you count these up individually, you'll get the number reference stations that are spread out along the coast of the Americas. Well, here's uh, this is uh, that uh, image that I showed you there of this uh, what's covered in this book, and you know I'm just, I just stuck these stars in just various positions just to express an idea to you. These are not the actual places of stations, but this is where reference stations might be. Okay, and then uh, if you wanted to calculate your tide here, you might calculate it uh, as a correction off of whatever you get for the daily page, daily things for these pages. In the next video that you'll have is going to show you how to actually use this stuff. But I just wanted to basically show you that reference stations are spread out along the coast. And the book can be organized north to south. Um, so if you want to see an alphabetical list of the stations, you have to actually go to the beginning of the book and right here. So that's an explanation of that. Now, one list of the uh, uh, daily tide predictions for the reference stations. Okay. So, uh, and it's every day of the year for each one of those 30 some odd stations. And then these are just, uh, you might take a moment to pause the video and read these, uh, these notes. Uh, lots of good information in this book. This is what a typical daily page looks like. This one happens to be for Boston, Massachusetts. 
This is the months of April, May, and June. So you can see that for one reference station, there's going to end up being, well, if there's three, one page for three months and there's 12 months, there's going to be four pages per reference station. Now, if you have 30 reference stations, you can see how it starts to add up. For this reason, we do not have tide tables for every place along the coast. It would just be, you know, you'd fill your boat up. So you have these reference stations. Let's just take a look. We'll take a closer look at a particular set of dates here. So this is simply just a, uh, an expansion of um, May 1st. So it's this column right here. And you can see here, here's a day, time and height. Okay, it's Boston, Massachusetts. So this is the first, it's a Sunday, the second, third, fourth, you get the idea. And then you have uh, hours and minutes. There's a column for hours and minutes, so that's time. There's a column for feet, there's a column for meters, okay? So this is basically two ideas of exp expressing the height of the tide, the difference between the datum and what the tide is at, at a particular time. So you can see here that at, perhaps like at 142 in the morning, the, high, the, tide, the height of the tide was 10.1 feet above the datum, okay? And at, eight, at 0801, the height of tide is 0.3 feet below the datum. Well, this was a high tide and that was a low tide. And you can see here, uh, you can get the predictions for uh, the reference station for every day of the year. All right. But down here at the bottom, all right, down at the bottom of this, uh, there's some words written down here. You, you can't see them because it's outside of the, uh, of the, uh, oh, there we go, right there. Okay. Here they are right down here. Okay. Um, and that says time meridian. And basically that's telling you the meridian for the zone description for this station, Boston, which in this case, the zone, the zone description, uh, the time meridian is 75, which means it's zone description plus five, all right? This entire book is in standard time. It is not in daylight savings time. Now we have gone uh, I just showed you one page from table one. Now we've gone to page 227 in the book. We're at table two. Table two is the uh, the, the data for the subordinate stations, the tidal differences table, okay? Tidal differences and other constants. So this is now where we're gonna start to get into the nitty gritty for various places up and down the coast. So you can see how it's organized here. Uh, there's a number. The number is going to come from the index at the end. I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, this is organized geographically. So here's the Florida Keys. And now we're just kind of going down the coast in the Florida Keys. Gives you the latitude and the longitude of the actual station where the tide was measured. And by the way, these the tides that were, uh, the observations of the tides were uh, observed for over a year, at least a year, okay? Every day, high and low for at least a year. Okay, now here is where you're kind of getting into the business of it all. High water, this is the time differences and the height differences. You're gonna be applying these numbers to a reference station. So for instance, this, uh, all of these uh, 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 stations here, these subordinate stations are referenced off of Miami. Miami, by the way, is on page 112. If I wanted to know what the tide was gonna be at Miami 79th Street, I would add, for a high water, one hour and 45 minutes to the time of high uh, for, for Miami, okay? If I wanted a low water, I'd add 2.13. Here's the height difference and the uh, low water difference, okay? We also learned about this again in the other video that you'll be seeing for this. Uh, ranges of tides, this is the mean, uh, the mean uh, you know, tidal range and the spring tidal range, all right? And the mean tide level, okay? Well, uh, interestingly enough, you know, so here we go. This is LA Key, LA Key Harbor. Most of this you're adding and subtracting, but you will find occasionally this little symbol here, like a little star. And when you see that little star, it's going to be on the high and low water corrections. Actually, what that is, is that's going to be a, a ratio. Instead of adding, subtracting, you're going to multiply that times your reference station. You'll learn more about that later. How you can actually decode that symbol is if you go to the end of table two, all right, um, See this end notes and there it is right there. Symbol ratio means uh, you know means it's a multiple you multiply it. Anyway, you can figure that out. All right, table three. And when you're trying to calculate what the high or low will be or what time the or or what the height of the tide will be at a certain time, you're gonna end up coming to this table. 
Uh, this is on page 237 in the book. And right at the beginning of it, uh, there's two examples. So if you get a little bit jammed up, uh, 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 you can always refer to this uh, to, to you know, figure out how to do a problem. I'm not going to take you through that right now. That's going to be done in another video. I'm just showing you where it is in the book. This is rule three in your book. Okay. Uh, it is uh, um, <clears throat> it's basically all on one page. Okay. And uh, it gives you the high tide at any time. If the table's got four variables in it range, duration, time from nearest high or low water, correction to height. Whenever you're using this table, you're going to have three of these and you're going to extract the fourth. The instructions for how to actually use this table are right here at the bottom. Okay, so you can read those uh, and uh, they show you how to do that. You'll notice that the ranges only go up to 20 feet. If you get a problem, now let's say you're in the Bay of Fundy and you have a greater range than 20 feet, you're going to need to read the instructions on the previous page. The instructions on the previous page uh, uh, ignored this right here. This problem 10 is an example. That was for another presentation. Uh, so the um, uh, C instructions, the range is greater than 20 feet at the top of page 238. Okay, this is the instructions blown up. Read these. And uh, this is the instruction for what to do if you have a range greater than 20 feet right there. Uh, you're not going to encounter that for some time, so I'm not going to bother showing you that now. You'll need to Use this at some point or other. All right. We've looked at the table. We looked at the list of reference stations alphabetically. We looked at um, the uh, table one, which was the daily the daily tables, the daily predictions for the reference station. We looked at table two, which was the corrections, the differences for the subordinate stations. Uh, then we looked at table three, which you're going to use to calculate, uh, uh, you know, height of the tide or a time of the height and you'll figure that out as we go along now you're looking at the glossary of terms so i really recommend you kind of go through this as you're uh, learning uh, uh, the uh, um, the vocabulary uh in this unit uh, you can also use the uh, uh your uh, glossary in bowditch now this is the index of stations you're almost in the very back of the book an alphabetical list of, of uh, stations along the coast of the Americas, the east coast of the Americas, I should say. Okay, so if you're trying to find a particular place, what you do is you would look it up in here and then you get a number and then this number you would then take back to table two, the uh, title differences, and then that would be the identifier and you could find it in there. You'll get a couple different types of problems uh, that you'll be using uh, this book for, particularly using table three. OK, uh, I've already kind of mentioned that a couple of times, but you're going to be encountering this uh, as you work through your workbook in TNAV 1. All right, and uh, that concludes the video for TNAV 1.